there are some problems with my old Porsche Cayenne. The thermostat doesn't seem to work because the engine never gets up to temperature. There's a leak from somewhere in the coolant system. The brake booster pipes have broken and have a bod repair on them. The tires are old and falling apart. Whenever I start this car up, I get plumes of horrible smoke, which looks like it's burning oil. The rear window release doesn't work. The gearbox sometimes clunks when changing gear. There are a few fault codes on the car, but worst of all, it has suddenly started leaking water from the roof. As a result, I have to put a half cover over this car every night. It's a really good cover from Classic Editions, does the job of keeping the rain out, but I'd rather get that issue fixed. Otherwise, this car is gonna start smelling like an old shed. Now, I'm heading off to Porsche Reading to get this car not only serviced, but as many of those faults fixed as possible. I'm a little bit worried how much all this is gonna cost. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you all to John. John is the guy that's going to be making my classic KN like new. Did you work on these when they were new? Yeah, don't see them quite so often, but still remembering things. And you work on classic Porsches such mm -hmm. as? From 356. Right up to? Latest GT3 RS, Taycans. Quite a wide range then. And this car is now classed as a classic. So it is. Because of your classic scheme. And I've actually, I thought, you know, it'd be a bit weird cars of this generation go through the classic scheme, but I've noticed quite a few 996s in here. But I suppose, like you say, you do 356s, G-Series, 911s, and all that kind of stuff as well. I bought the car into you yesterday. You've done some prep work on it. What have you done so far? We've changed the ATF oil. And so that's the automatic on. transmission fluid. Yep. Now, I had a problem with that. It was like, occasionally the car, like maybe in fourth gear, it was just like, what could be causing that? So it could be the oil quality, depend on the previous use. The oil can degrade from that point of view naturally. Obviously there are external influences. If you've got the right tires and also any differential in tire tread depth, sorry. I haven't got like the that. right tires, have I? Those are the wrong wheels for the yeah. car, aren't they? They are, they're from an E2, they're I think. Just, so you've also done an oil change. You noticed that the oil condition probably could have done with a change. That's interesting though, because I actually had the car serviced recently and they put fresh oil in it, mm -hmm. but I think the service before then hadn't been done for a few years. Would there still be bits of old oil left in the engine or something? Exactly that, yeah. So the engine's dirty inside, um, the carbon deposits, that sort of thing. The oil will flush it off of the metal parts and then take it back into the oil. So um, if you get an old car yeah. and it hasn't had an oil change for ages, it might be worth doing like one oil change and then shortly after another oil change. Yeah. Another thing that you looked at, the fan on the car, like it would run for a bit and then it would just stop working. Mm. And you've removed the old fan, now put a new fan in. You've obviously prepped it for so, the more serious jobs which are coming up in a bit. Yeah, so the header tank, obviously Lewis had identified that it was leaking. We've got a thermostat going in. Yeah. Now these cars have a known for having problems with their coolant pipes. Any issues can you see? Um, so E1 KN, they had plastic coolant pipes running down the V and when we went to E12 they changed that design. There's a few plastic pipes in there but not as many as they used to be with the E1. The only plastic part that is in there is a socket between the thermostat housing and the water pump and we're going to replace that anyway. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I thought I'd help you out today, John. Maybe keep the labour rate down Fantastic. by me acting as your assistant. Every little helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will do to my pocket anyway. So I'll be assisting you in some of the fixes. We'll see whether I'm actually a help or a hindrance. Now, I know my old K may have a few problems, such as the leak. However, I do know that it hasn't been stolen, it hasn't been written off, it hasn't had its mileage wound back, and it hasn't got any outstanding finance on it. And I know all that because I was sensible enough to run its registration through Car Vertical before I bought it. And the Car Vertical report came back all clean, which is good news. However, that's not always the case with every used vehicle. You see, not all cars have a clean past. Here's a different car vertical report on another Porsche Cayenne. It's a newer one, a diesel from 2016. And while it checks out in terms of theft, finance and mileage, there is a flag against it for damage. And as I scroll down, I can actually see pictures of the damage on the car. It appears to have been in a front end collision and it's obviously severe enough to have triggered the airbags, which is not good. So if I was looking to buy this car, I'd have run its registration through Car Vertical, seen these pictures and thought, no, I'm not gonna buy that. So if you're thinking about buying a used car, make sure you don't buy one with a dodgy past. Go to Car Vertical and use the code Watson for 20% off. I've actually put a link to Car Vertical in the description of this video and my pinned comment to take you directly there. Or you can use the pop-out banner that should be appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen to go directly there. Or the QR code, just scan it with your phone and you go straight to Car Vertical. And use the code Watson 
for 20% off. In fact, if you've bought a car but you never checked its past, you should do a car vertical report on it now just to make sure you're not driving around in something that's been damaged and could be unsafe. Hmm. And don't forget, use the code Watson for 20% off. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So John, I obviously had this leaky roof issue. I came to it one morning and there's water leaking from like the sunglasses holder. It's filled the passenger footwell. The car was slightly parked like that. So right. it was leaning towards the passenger side. What might have caused that? What tends to happen is that the plenum panels fill up with debris, leaves and things like that. Where are the plenum panels? So this section round here, yeah. um, round by the- It looks clean. Right, I've given it a clean now. The drains block, um, uh -huh. it fills up past the servo there. Yep, past um, this, yeah. And then it, it defeats the, the drain. So the drain then backs up, up into the roof, and then it spills into the roof console and that sort of thing. Was there much in there? Um, a fair bit, we've taken it, it's in the Hoover. So uh, a fair bit, and it looks like- Wait a minute. We've seen- Wait, wait, wait. so this was all- Yes. <laughs> oh, look at this, look at this, this is like, this was all in- there was a in lot there. In there. Yes, there's uh, a big area in there. What both about sides. the other side? Yeah, both sides. A lot of that. But we <laughs> have found this? it looks like it may have had a mouse in at some point. So and this is a sticker that's from your, from the wiring loom behind that area. Oh look, yeah, look, it's the original sticker, K and Turbo, and it's been eaten by a mouse. Yeah, it does look like yeah. You haven't found a mouse, have you? We haven't at the moment, but I'm still on the lookout. So. So we think that will solve the leaky roof issue. Yes. And I would say this evidence is pretty damning. <laughs> That's never been done, has it? Uh, not for a while, no. <laughs> John, I think we need to talk about this particular part now. It's been taped up. A few times, yeah. And here. I think that was me, actually. This was the cause of my braking issue. Essentially, it's the vacuum line that takes vacuum from the pump on the back of the engine yeah. into the brake booster, uh, which makes the brakes feel much lighter. Which Lewis in the press office fixed with his tape. He did. And he did the job. It would do, yeah. So it would last for a while, but it's temporary repair. So while we're here, we can put a new pipe in there. So we've got everything off. And this is yes. the new part of the new pipe there. First half going in now, yeah. And we'll put the other bit in later. But how dangerous was it, like with the gaps in the hose? It increases the braking effort required from the driver. I noticed that it was like a racing car. Yeah, it was like, yeah, a lot, no lot harder. Yeah. at all. Always good to have your brakes working properly. <laughs> While John is putting things back in the plenum, ready for the new expansion tank to go in, I thought I'd show you the old one. You can see that the seam has actually corroded and it's been leaking coolant out here. It's because it's this two-piece design and eventually over time it's just worn out, this seal, and it's failed. Now this is the reason why when the coal was first delivered to me, it was like leaking coolant <laughs> after a long drive. It was a major concern when it first showed up. I thought, oh my God, what have I bought? But it's not that big of a deal and we're gonna fix it right now. John, I could see you're having a bit of a battle getting the old thermostat out. Would you be replacing this plastic part anyway? Yes. Do you want to know something? I actually was considering doing the thermostat replacement myself, having seen someone do it on YouTube, but having seen you, an expert of how many, 30 years, struggle, shall we say, it, there's no way. <laughs> It's just access and, like say, bits of plastic and things like that, quite sharp down there as well. So feel free, crack on and do it. Yeah, you cut your like, knuckles, haven't you? But yeah, it's a little bit scratchy. This is the old water pump. You say this has been replaced already? That socket has been replaced in the history. We can see that it leaked and there's some debris down the middle of the V old coolant. So this socket had leaked in the past because the gasket isn't available separately once you've taken it off, fit a new one. Yeah, because you don't want to do all this work and then the no. water pump to fail. But this was the problem here. It is the thermostat. This moves backwards and forwards and it opens and shuts a valve to let either coal coolant through. But the thing that controls it is this device here, which mm -hmm. almost looks like a cigarette lighter. And what happened is this seized in the open position. Seized in the open position. When the car got really hot and it remained open ever since, it was running cooler than it should have been for normal drive. Driving. It was probably fueling slightly rich, which means that now this is fixed, it should have more power. Potentially. Yes, <laughs> I've, I could imagine that it has. Right, and so that's all very interesting and very key to getting this car running as best as possible. But there's still more to do. John has been doing all the work so far, but I want to have a little go. What I'd like to work on, because this is something I was definitely going to do myself, is the glass release here mm. at the back. The switch isn't working. So are you all right to let me do it? I can show you what to do to release it. Obviously, as the switch doesn't work, we can't pop the glass until we've opened the rear lid and there's a manual release. Okay, so, so lift open the lid up. up. Yeah, little trim to remove there. There's a little catch just there. Push it in and it should release. Way Result! <laughs> so I know where the emergency release is. So now I've got it open, you can get access to... Rear wiper link. 
and but we don't need to touch this and we no. don't need to touch that because no. there's no problems with that i've just got to get amongst this bit here yeah so what causes these switches to fail is it just water getting water, in? water ingress into the plastic really it's so the that's the there. switch wiring there so i just need to undo that there we go test the switch obviously it isn't necessarily the switch it might be the motor or it won't be in but generally the motor though is in is in that section. So we definitely don't want it to be that. Yeah. Oh. So we can plug that in. Okay. So just as a test. Okay. That's it. And then please we lock, lock it over. Please work on the press it. Yes. Uh, yeah, Your so job's easy, John. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we need to take wiper arm off. You get a new one of these, which is good because it breaks quite regularly. There we go. That's the one. It didn't Actually, break. Someone's oh. glued it already. Uh, someone has okay. been there before. This is not its first time at the rodeo. No. The issues we have moving on from this point, the wiper arm's made of plastic and invariably it corrodes on. So we think um, that's going to snap? Potentially. We've got a spare just in case, just so in we'll case. be all right. Okay. So we'll, we'll I'm going to do, do this though, John, so yeah, it's yeah, all of on me. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Oh! So it's come undone. Telling part is whether that actually comes off of the um, spline. And what you don't want to do is leave it on the glass. No, exactly. Because that's when you smash your window and you're in all sorts of trouble. No. Yeah, no, that's, that's C. So basically what we would use, we've got a puller that we can use. Or so this is one of the things, you know that this is a problem. So you've got all these specialist tools. Blimey. I mean, you're grimacing there, aren't you? Yeah, and like I say, it generally it won't come off. It will just go with a pop if it's uh, going to come off. Oh! And it's just broke the arm, which is good because that's what normally happens. <laughs> <laughs> True to form for the K head. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to have to cut that off. Okay. Let's no do worries. that bit. Okay. So John's going to just torque the rear glass up. I don't want to do it because, get this wrong, the whole glass panel just goes crack. I hope you got the right setting. <laughs> oh, there it was. <laughs> you were a little bit I nervous was, there. Yes. <laughs> we're doing it. I was Stop thinking, doing it. it feels like it's too much. But, so basically, the switch should be level in the central position. That's not central. No, let's uh, give it a go. Oh, but hasn't it got that grommet in it? It has, keeping, it's got a guide. But... Keeping it central. <laughs> okay, so I'll hold this. It's not quite level again. I didn't hold it far enough. <laughs> Maybe we hold it a bit further around. Good job you're on an hourly rate, isn't it? <laughs> go for it. Third time lucky. <laughs> that is level. If it's not level, we'll make it look level in post. There's a bit of play in it, but that's because it's just what it is. So do you go for... Go for better? lower rather than higher. Go you know, for the, level. Okay, so that's where it's going to yeah. end up there, because yeah. it's going to have the weight of that on there. So whack the nut on. So, John, did you get it right? Did you get it level? Go level. John, I was right, mate. One too high. First time today I've been right. Victory. <laughs> At last. <laughs> That's it. I think that'll be it. I think you're right. Yeah, let's tighten that up. <laughs> Finally, that took about an hour, and that was with your help knowing what to do. Do you know what? I don't think I want to do any more, John. I'm going to leave you to get on with some other bits. Okie dokie. When I originally had my car checked over by Lewis in the press office, he noticed some oil that he reckons were coming from the boost pipes. And I've also got this symptom that when I turn the car on, for the first few seconds, a big load of like smoke comes out the back, but it doesn't continue smoking. It's just like one big poof yeah. of smoke. Could that be caused by these boost pipes? Yeah, so the external leak is exactly that. It's coming out of the, the seal and also the Jubilee clip end. Once oil gets in the pipe, stays in and then builds up, then the intercooler will start to fill up with oil. And then it sits in the intake and then you turn it off, it all runs down to the lowest points, which is the intake valves. And then the next time you start it, that's when you get right. a cloud of smoke. Like I say, periodically we would take these off and empty them anyway, but these have obviously passed their best. I would say they're probably the originals if I tip it so we can see it dripping out yeah. there. And if you look down here, then all this oil in there came out of these boost pipes. Yeah, so I would say about, yeah, about that full up. Wow. So right, so you think that after changing the pipes and we've emptied out that oil and I shouldn't have that light like, smoke on startup anymore? We would hope not, no. I hope not, because that could be something more serious. Um, like, obviously, the turbo could have an issue. The symptoms that we've got in front of us, that's the way we would look at Most it. Most likely that. Yeah. Let's hope it is. Well, John, you've done it. You completed all the tasks. It was great to see a professional in action. Did it take you back working on this old car? Yeah, it's like... 
seeing an old friend and sort of catching up. <laughs> I'm really sorry about hindering you with some of the tasks, especially doing this. I think I got in the way, but it was satisfying to actually be part of fixing the car, and I'm really glad that works now. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to driving it to see if it, you know, we fix some of those things that we're not sure about, like you know, the, the smoke on start. Thank you very much for doing the car. It's been a real pleasure Welcome. working with you. Well, getting in your way. <laughs> Anyway, do you know what I've got to do now? I've got to go get the bill. Oh, I'll leave you to that. Uh, huh? yeah. All right, and so I've picked the car up. I'll tell you about how much it all came to in a moment. First things first though, I'm going to put this thing into sports mode because it really changes how it drives. I actually haven't really been able to push this car because I've just been too worried about those rubbish old tires. But now with these Michelins on, I can have some fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I can't believe how big and heavy this car is, yet how well it goes around corners. I mean, Porsche absolutely nailed the dynamics of this car. Wow! <laughs> it just handles so well. What I'm going to do, actually, is keep it in sports mode, so it's aggressive for the gearbox and the engine, but the air suspension's in comfort mode, and now it just glides. I mean, back in the day, it must have just blown every single other SUV out of the water. Look at this! Whoa! <laughs> The steering's slower than modern KNs, but the chassis balance is just absolutely bang on. That is so much fun, and the performance from this engine, oh my god. Do you know what? The previous 955, the earlier version, the pre-facelift with the 4.5, when I've driven them, they just don't feel as fast as this. This sport bun has a lot to do with it. It just changes the character of the car. It just makes everything more aggressive. The engine response is just so instant. The gearbox is just more responsive as well and they didn't have that button on the 955 the earlier generation car and it's great to see the thermostat is working the engine is up to temperature obviously i wouldn't have been thrashing it if it wasn't but let's have another go go back into sport changes the character instantly and the noise and i have confidence in the brakes now because they've been repaired properly rather than some bodge job <laughs> with some tape and the way it deals with the bumps with the air suspension incredible i'm going to put it back into comfort mode and just chill for a bit because i really want to just test this gearbox i'm going to change into fourth now smooth as you like it's funny isn't it how sometimes just a service can make a car feel so much better another thing to test oh yeah the blower fan it works this thing almost drives like a new car. Now, I haven't been able to test whether it's still leaking. Hopefully not, after all that stuff was pulled out of the car, which is probably blocking the drains. They have tested it, they've pressure tested it, they're left outside, and no water leaked in. So we should be good on that one, because a leak in a car is terrible. But I have to say, I'm really, really pleased so far. I think we should probably pull over and find out how much it all cost me. This Mark 1 Porsche Cayenne is now old enough to qualify for Porsche's classic register. That means discounted labour and parts rates. Now bear that in mind when I'm giving you the cost of all the bits I've had done to the car. Engine oil and filter change, £406. Gearbox oil and filter change, £450. Power steering fluid and tank change. Didn't know I needed that done, though to be fair, the steering did judder a bit when you're stationary and turning full lock. Doesn't do that anymore. That was... £428. Coolant tank replacement and flush, £275. Water pump and thermostat, £690. Brake booster vacuum line, £208. Boost hoses, £301. Blower fan replacement, £319. Brake fluid and caliper bleed screws, £302. Rear wiper crank and switch, £571. Engine oil cap, eight pounds and windscreen washer cap also eight pounds that means the total spent three thousand nine hundred and sixty seven pounds uh now when you add that to the price i paid for the car seven thousand five hundred pounds i'm all in for this vehicle eleven thousand five hundred pounds i guess right I could have bought one in brilliant condition, similar mileage, and it would probably have cost that. And to be fair, you know, I'd have ended up finding some things wrong with that supposedly brilliant car. So pff, who knows? Who knows, right? Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Matt. If you'd have gone to an independent dealer, the parts and labour would have cost you less. Well, no, not the parts, but labour, yes. But, you know, some people want to go to their main dealer for that main dealer stamp. And maybe they'll have their new Porsche serviced by the main dealer. And they just want to get their older ones done through them as well. I mean, there were plenty of old classic Porsches in the workshop when I was there. 
So anyway, you pay your money, you take your choice. Now, considering I've paid all that money for this car, I think we need to test the performance. According to Porsche, this KN 2007 4.8 should do 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds. So I'm gonna see how quick it really is, and that'll give me an indication of how many horses it has lost over the years. Does it still have the full 500 horsepower? Well, I'm at it, I may as well measure a quarter mile time as well. So I'm gonna put it into sport mode. I'll lower the suspension down a bit feel it going down. Then I'm just going to brake boost it and time it with my specialist timing gear. That shot off really well. Come on, what's 0 to 60? 4.85, that's good. What's the standing quarter mile though? Come on. This is so quick for an old car. 13.2 seconds. Ooh. That's not bad, you know. That 0 to 60 though, 4.85 from an old car like this. I don't think it's lost any horsepower. I really don't. Nice. That might be. What I'm gonna do now is a brake test from 60 miles an hour. See how good the brakes are on this old car. Here we go, anchors on. No. Now I'm wanting it to have done it in about 35 meters. 108 feet, that's 33 meters. That's really, really very good. I'm shocked. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Click on the video windows for some more videos and on the little Matt Watson face to subscribe to this channel. That way you won't miss a single upload. See you soon.